Okay, this video is just going to briefly go over uh, the things you will accomplish, what you, you can expect to see as you complete Module 1. Uh, module 1 is all about databases and database objects, and basically it's just an introductory field. Um, in here I have several documents that you need to look at. Um, this uh, PDF gives you a, a look at all of the databases that you'll be working with for the semester and how the tables are supposed to be set up. Follow the directions in the book, but this is a great check sheet. So this is the document. It kind of it goes through um, what the assignment tables look like. It's a guideline. If we just look first at, um, actually, you will ha you will have the tables in the um, in the Pratt Last, which is going to be our primary database that we'll manage throughout the semester. This is the guideline for all of the assignments. So Lab One is called Garden Naturally, and it tells you what the field names are, uh, what the uh, different codes are. Um, let's see what the primary key is, what the field types are. As we go through the semester and managing these particular databases, we'll make some changes to those. But you can see for Garden Naturally, you're going to have two tables a customer table and a sales rep table. For uh, Lab 2 Museum Gift Shop, you'll have the item table and the vendor table. And for Camshay Marketing, you will have the client table and the marketing, marketing analyst table. And um, these will um, be to get you started. Uh, this database structure check sheet is sort of just a check sheet for you to just ensure that you have everything that you should have in the database. And I did make it a true check sheet. It is very long. You can print it out by module or print out the entire document if you like. And then check it off if you've done. So if you look at module one for Pratt Last, uh, the tables are the account manager and account table. The form, the only form you have for module one is the account form. The query is called the account query. And the book will step you through these and you'll make these uh, automatically. They won't be by design, but they will be a, an easy um, button that, that will, um, will uh, simulate what a wizard does. It really is a macro, but you don't need to know that now. And then a report, uh, the account financial report. So for the entire module, I have listed um, each of the databases and what you should expect to have at the end of the uh, assignment before you submit them for grading. And you see in module two, of course, they get longer. We're going to be doing queries in module two. And so you, it, and let me slow down. Module three is here and all of the things. If you look at these tables, if um, any of these things are grayed out, the ones that are open and white are the ones I will be grading and will provide you a detailed feedback on each one of those. So I wanted you to see that. Um, I did provide some data files here for module one. It is a folder that you need to download. So if we go back to our folders, let's go ahead and uh, Let's go back to our DBA 110, Module 1, and I'm going to make a folder called um, Data Files. And now we're, we're going to go back to the course and download that. Alright, so I want to download the entire folder. This uh, gives us uh, a data file. It gives us uh, several data files that we're going to use. So I'm going to download the entire folder. And I'm going to put it into, well actually this setup, I'm going to show it in folder. And then I'm going to cut it and move it where I want it. So I'm going to cut this. And I'm going to move it to um, the database 110 module 1 data files. And I'm going to paste it here. Okay, I've pasted the uh, data file folder, and this is a zip folder, compressed folder, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and extract it um, so that we can have access to all the files. I'm just going to tell it to extract all, 
and I'm going to keep it in place. You see it's in Documents, it's in the DBA 110 uh, folder, it's in Module 1, it's in Data Files folder. And I'm going to extract it, extract it in place. And then all the files and they open. And these are files that you'll need to use to complete Module 1. And they'll be similar. Um, you won't have data files for every chapter, but I will provide them for every module, but I will provide them uh, when need be. Okay. All right, so let's go back to week one. So I've talked about the files um, that you'll have. Here are the assignments. Here's a, another video that you will have from um, one of um, someone else that teaches the course that kind of walks through the module. Um, you don't have to use it, but I did provide it for uh, some assistance uh, to you. And because I thought, uh, I, look, I, I viewed many of them, but it was pretty thorough and uh, kind of stepped you through if, they, if you had any kind of issue. Um, okay, so then you will submit these databases, the Pratt Last Associates, the Lab 1, Lab 2, and Lab 3. You see, please be very mindful of, of the due date, January 13th. That gives you exactly one week. And then the discussion form is also due on the 13th. And then I usually make the exams due on a Sunday. And so you'll have this exam that will be due on uh, January 19th. Um, let me show you what the output um, looks like for module one. Let me see, module one. And here's um, Pratt Last Associates. Let me. All right, so here's what it'll look like. And if you remember that sheet we looked at, you have two tables, the account table and the account manager table. The account query, which you will create using the account table. The account form, which you'll create using the account table. And the account financial report, which you will build using the account and account manager tables together. So that's um, what you'll see in Pratt Last. In Lab 1, Garden Naturally. Oh, by the way, Pratt Last will always be the most extensive because it'll contain all of the features of the module. And the other um, assignments will often contain just portions of, uh, portions of some of the steps that you completed. You'll, for instance, in this, in this particular uh, lab, you see you only have two tables, the customer table and the sales rep table. You have one query, which is the customer query, and you have one customer financial report. Let's take a look at lab two. It's the uh, museum gift shop. And you see this security warning, I've just been clicking it without a word because we haven't gotten to that chapter yet. but. Um, this is a, I don't know if you remember, but I mentioned in the last video about the trust center. It lets you set the degree of trust you have for uh, access databases that sometimes contain, contain macros. I have all mine set at the same level, medium level. So it always asks me if I want to enable the content. If you don't do that, then some of the features that you want to use in a database will not be usable. So I always enable the content. In the lab two, we have the item table and the vendor table. We have the item query. We have the item form. And we have something called an item status report. So this one has um, the same number of objects, I think, as does as did the Pratt Last. Um, now, I think the Pratt Last had, had one additional form. But um, you can see the reinforcement exercises usually have fewer objects than the primary Pratt last, which, as I said, will carry throughout the semester. And then we'll take a look at Lab 3, Enable the Content. This has two tables, the Client table and the Marketing Analyst table. It has two queries, the Client Query and Client Query Modified. I'm going to talk about that. 
um, make sure you follow the directions carefully. They're going to have you open the client query and then make a change. And then when you get there, you have to perform a save as. It will tell you to do that. But you have to, to perform a save as to make a slight modification to the query and then save it as client query modified. You have one client form and the client financial report. And that will give you all of the um, all of the expected assignments out of module one. Let me show. Let me share something with you on how this looks. So remember, I said that Access's job was to maintain and the integrity of all the data. Let me show you something because this will confuse you. I'm going to open the Pratt Last Associates, and we're going to go back and look at our folders. And now it looks like, and my students always say, I have two of them. I have two of them. You don't have two. You have this one that has a little tiny lock on it. I don't know if you can see that, but it says over here, Microsoft at Access Record Locking Information. This is what keeps multiple people from making substantive changes to a database at one time. Basically, you can when, when I have it open, I cannot send it to anyone. I cannot share it with anyone. I cannot upgrade it to my instructor for grading. Uh, you have to make sure the database is closed. So you see how this looks. So it, you see you have the Pratt Last. Which, this is the real database, and this is the locked one. So you can, it'll let you open it. It'll let you make changes, but it won't save anything. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And I'm going to go back and close Pratt Last, and I'll re and then we'll look back at the screen. You'll see. It'll be back to the the four databases. See there? Okay. So I wanted to say that. Uh, let me talk to you for a minute about grading. So basically, you're going to upload these modules as they come due every time. Um, you'll just hit the assignment link, and then you ha have the option to submit the file. Um, I will get the file. You don't have to put your name on it. When I uh, go to grade, I always make discrete folders for each instruct each uh, student. And um, in fact, I'll show you the way that I make them. I'll look. Let me see if I have an old one from the last time I taught the class. I might have gotten rid of them. I retired since then. So, all right. So you see, I di I did keep it. Here's student folder student files, and I kept the student files for each student by module that's what I do I'm very organized and um, I'll maintain your files in that very same that very same way so I don't want you to worry about that but let me um, see if I have oh yeah so let me give you an idea what will happen uh, when I grade these I have a, because I've done this for so many years, I've taught access now for about 18 years. Um, I have some pre-formatted uh, verbiage that I copy and paste and then edit it so it fits whatever errors you may have made in the database. So I have this great one up here that says, perfect. This database is ready to move forward to the next module's work. You will apply these same skills to all reinforced assignments for this module. And that, that's usually what I have for module one. It's the easiest one. Now, I think this is this is from module one. But I will give you very specific, very specific, uh, you know, grading notes. So I will say you have the following errors in this database and I will that you can have one or two or however many I'll address each one. And I then I say specifically what's wrong? You did not correctly name the customer table. You named it whatever you named it. And people make this error all the time. You also did not use the customer number as the primary key. You let the wizard assign a primary key, which is incorrect. You have some misnamed fields. And then I will subtract the points, but I then tell you how to fix it because it is absolutely necessary that you fix it before moving forward to the next module. 
So then I tell her, I tell this person to right click the table and select rename, change the name to customer. Remember up here, this person named the customer workbook table. It's incorrect. Open the customer table in design view. Unassigned ID is the primary key. Remember I said that uh, that person let the wizard assign a primary key, which is incorrect. I tell them how to fix that. So I will give you very specific notes and tell you exactly what you have to do so that going forward you um, have what you need because these modules build one on the other. As you maintain the database in module one, you will use your database that you, you finished in module one is a starting point for module two and so on and so forth. Okay, I think that's all I want to share with you about um, module one. The videos will get more uh, in depth, I think, as we proceed. Um, module one is pretty simple. Follow the directions, stay on top of uh, these things, are pretty simple to set up the, the first module. They get more complicated as we go through the, the um, semester. Okay, that's it. Thanks.